Hey guys and welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today Steve has tasked me with looking at a product he's wanted for quite some time. A professional grade 32 inch 4K monitor he can use for video editing and perhaps a bit of gaming and benchmarking on the side. The monitor in question is the ViewSonic VP3268, one of the highest end monitors ViewSonic sells. And a huge shout out here to ViewSonic for not only providing us with the monitor to review, but also allowing us to use it for our content creation. To make things clear, this monitor isn't geared towards gaming. That's not to say you can't use it for gaming, but you'd probably be better served with a similar display for half the price. The lack of a gaming focus is seen in the spec sheet too, as this panel does not support variable refresh technology like FreeSync, and its 14 millisecond greater gray response time is fairly slow, certainly slower than I'd want for gaming. What you do get though is an excellent set of professional features. Each VP3268 is individually calibrated at the factory with Delta E levels below 2.0 to four commonly used color spaces, sRGB, Rec 709, SMPTE-C, and EBU. Each color space gets its own display mode accessible through the on-screen display, and each comes with a detailed calibration report in the box so you can verify whether the display is up to scratch. The VP3268 also uses a true 8-bit panel with support for up to a 14-bit lookup table and support for 10-bit through FRC. It's not a true 10-bit display, but then again, there's not any of these panels actually available below $2,000. So we'll take the 8-bit plus FRC here. The panel itself is an IPS LCD with a 1300 to 1 contrast ratio, 350 nits of peak brightness, and what ViewSonic claims is excellent uniformity, another key feature for professionals. The monitor even supports HDR, though this feature isn't advertised, and that's probably for a good reason. More on that later. I really like the design of this display, and that's because it gets the most important thing right, that's the bezel size. The bezels around the VP3268 on all sides are extremely thin, which helps make the expansive 32 inch panel feel even larger. It also helps when you want to use multiple monitors, something creative professionals almost always do, as you can put two of these displays side by side with a very small gap between. As far as construction is concerned, the monitor is well built, but it doesn't go overboard with fancy features or unnecessary flair. Most of the monitor uses basic plastic, and it's somewhat annoying the parts of the stand use a glossy, dust-attracting finish, but the design does look good though, and won't look out of place on a professional's desk. Did I mention the bezels are really slim? Because yeah, that is definitely the best part of this design. All the stand adjustability you'd want is included here, such as 130 mil of height adjustment, 120 degrees of swivel, and you can pivot it into a portrait orientation. There's also a small though serviceable amount of tilt, and of course you can visa mount it if you desire. What about connectivity? Well, there's no shortage of display inputs. Two HDMI 2.0 ports, a full-size display port, and also a mini display port. Mini DP is an unusual connector to use here, though I guess it must be useful for someone, otherwise, you know, ViewSonic wouldn't have included it. There's also a set of 3.5mm audio jacks, one input and one output, allowing you to use either the dual 5 watt internal speakers or you can pass through audio from HDMI or DisplayPort. Oh, and there's also a 4 port USB 3.0 hub as well. On a less positive note, the on screen display is hard to control as it uses basic buttons rather than a directional toggle. If you want to change color profile, it can be achieved relatively easily. But if you want to fine tune any other controls, it's a difficult slog through menus that aren't really designed for these sort of controls. Most of the controls in the OSD are relatively common inclusions, things such as brightness and contrast sliders, color temperature controls, settings for overdrive, and so forth. While I didn't find ghosting to be too much of an issue with this display while using it, you know, for just general applications and desktop use, you know, despite that slow 14 millisecond response time, uh, switching to overdrive to sort of a medium setting did improve things. In fact, ViewSonic even suggests you can halve the response times with an appropriate overdrive setting. 
It's not surprising that response times are less than ideal because ViewSonic has opted for a professional grade IPS LCD rather than the faster TN or VA panels that we often find at these sort of 4K displays. What you do get with the IPS panel is excellent viewing angles in all directions helped through an anti-glare coating. The 3840 by 2160 resolution this panel uses isn't all that new these days, but it's always nice to see such a sharp and crisp presentation at this size. I am still waiting on 4K displays with greater than 60 hertz refresh rates to hit the market. You know, those were supposed to be coming this year, but it hasn't really eventually though for now the VP3268 hits the maximum of 60 Hz we've seen at this resolution. In my testing the display hit the marks that ViewSonic lists in their specification sheet for brightness and contrast. When cranked all the way up to maximum this display achieved uh, just a bit over 350 nits in my testing while contrast was around 1460 to 1, actually higher than ViewSonic states. This is maintained well at lower brightness levels too, falling to around 1400 to 1 as you move down to 120 nits. Uniformity is outstanding and that's exactly as you'd expect from a professional grade display. No backlight bleed to speak of and a sub 1.5 delta E color difference relative to the center. Most quadrants are actually a sub 1.0 delta E difference and this improves at darker grayscale levels. I haven't yet seen a cheaper or gaming focused monitor that achieves similar levels of uniformity. So it's clear that this is one thing you'll only get with a more expensive monitor like this. So let's see how the monitor performs. In this section, I'll be focusing exclusively on the sRGB mode as that's the most popular color profile and the one I'm most familiar with for testing. The other modes, particularly Rec 709, will be handy for those who require more niche color spaces relevant to their fields of work, but sRGB is the most common and the most widely used. The first thing I want to point out is you must switch the monitor into its sRGB mode from the default color mode if you want sRGB accuracy. The default mode is basically a user mode that allows you to change various settings and make adjustments to performance, while the integrated color modes lock down settings to adhere to factory calibration. The only disappointing aspect to the sRGB mode is the brightness is locked to 120 nits, which is fine for most office use, but it doesn't give users the flexibility to adjust brightness to suit their usage conditions. Sure, accuracy might stray from that factory report at different brightness levels, but I'd like to see a way to unlock this feature within the mode, perhaps with a toggle between you know, a factory calibrated brightness and a user brightness. Aside from this, the sRGB mode is outstanding and requires very few tweaks to achieve elite performance. Starting with grayscale results, we're seeing a delta E average of 1.71, which achieves ViewSonic's calibration targets and provides near perfect accuracy. Gamma is fantastic, while color temperature appears slightly tinted towards the red end of the spectrum, though on average it does come close to that ideal 6500K mark. This correlates well as well with that report that ViewSonic provided in the box. Saturation performance is outstanding with a delta E average under 1.0 with a peak value no greater than 2.0. This sort of performance is rarely seen in those cheaper gaming focused displays, so you're certainly getting your money's worth here. Color checker results are also fantastic, again with a delta E average under 1.0 and very few colors exceeding a delta E of 2.0 despite the significant amount of colors that this test actually tests for. These sort of results are not only what you'd want but also what you'd expect from a professional monitor and it's impressive that ViewSonic has actually outperformed their own metrics in providing a delta E that's not just lower than 2.0 on average but often under 1.0 for individual colors. The benefit to having this sort of performance out of the box is you don't need to mess around with color profiles in Windows which are often irritating to set up correctly and many programs simply ignore them. With the ViewSonic VP3268 you can plug in this monitor and guarantee accurate performance in whatever application you'd like without having to deal with messy profiles. For the absolute best performance, I would suggest using a color calibration tool to tidy up those grayscale performance. Achieving a delta E under 1.0 with this display is trivial, though that will require a software profile. If you don't choose to do this though, you will still get fantastic results. I did want to talk briefly here about the HDR mode that's included, which you can find buried in the display settings. Flick it on and the VP3268 appears as an HDR capable display in Windows 10 and in supported games. 
Firstly, you're never gonna get an ideal HDR experience with this monitor as it A, doesn't support a gamut wider than sRGB and B, doesn't support a high enough brightness. Using HDR on this monitor is like using HDR on any old SDR display. It doesn't work or really even make sense. In fact, for the most part, enabling HDR makes the display look considerably worse as windows and games try and do things the monitor is not capable of. The main question when buying any professional grade hardware is whether the pro specific features and certifications justify the increased price tag. In the case of the VP3268, this display is available for around $900 or 1300 Aussie, while the cheapest 32 inch 4K monitor is around $450 to $700 Australian these days. Obviously, if you're a gamer that just wants a 32 inch 4K display, there's no reason to buy the VP3268. Get something in cheaper instead, and you'll probably be happier. But if you're a professional that wants a high quality accurate display, there's a lot to like about the VP3268. It supports four separate color spaces, each with a dedicated factory calibrated profile, and in my testing with the sRGB mode, it's certainly very accurate. You simply won't find an equivalent display with this level of accuracy, without using awkward software profiles that is, around that $450 price point. It also has outstanding uniformity, another key ingredient professionals, and something much harder to calibrate with an inferior display. From that perspective, if you do want these features, the VP3268 is a great buy. I'm sure Steve will be very happy to add it to his testing and content creation workflow, otherwise I'll have to head to his place and steal it back off him. Anyway, if you are interested in grabbing one of these monitors, links to it are in the description below through Amazon, and I guess I have to get back to some Ryzen mobile testing, so I'll catch you next time.